8648 back with another fun-filled, fast automotive review. Today I'm going to be reviewing my 2003 Mazda Speed Protégé. Now the question when reviewing such a car as this, is not so much what is there to like about the car, but more or, le more or less, what is there not to like about the car? That question I think is pretty important when reviewing this kind of car and determining if this is the uh, a good platform or even a good daily driver for you. Now the exterior cosmetic uh, rice inspired aesthetics um, would make this vehicle any 18 year old's uh, dream machine. It is a uh, 5 speed. It does contain a uh, Garrett T25 uh, turbocharger mated to a 2.0 liter inline 4 cylinder engine. The thing is if you're in that age bracket, more than likely you're going to want to slap a boost controller on this thing and uh, squeeze a little bit more power out of it. The issue with that is, is uh, these motors are about as fragile, fragile as an eggshell. Um, basically, if you get any more power out of that motor, you can almost guarantee that uh, you're going to be replacing the engine. So, um, you know, it, you'll probably be okay with uh, cold air intake, uh, exhaust, you know, things that really probably slow slow a car down. You know, but anything that get, squeezes real power out of a car, uh, this motor cannot take it. Now, uh, being four doors and being a manual transmission, uh, you would think this would be a good uh, gas getter, you know, easy on fuel. Well, think again. This thing sucks on gas. Well, you know, it, you, you, they say you got to pay to play, but heh, even um, sucking on gas, this thing is not all that fast. In fact, it's kind of slow. Um, yeah, it just, uh, when getting on the interstate, it's like, you know, it's, it's like, uh, I can't get up, to, I want to get up to 65 or 70, but I, it's just take, you know, taking a long time. So, you know, that's, that's my opinion about the power output. You know, so, not only do you got to pay, but you ain't really playing either. So, it is what it is. Um, you know, a couple good things performance-wise. The car uh, has really tight handling, really uh, stiff and tight suspension. The car handles great. I'll give it that for a four-door. Uh, it's got pretty spacious trunk space, and it comes with a 450-watt seven-speaker um, Uh, sound system and it sounds great. It comes with the factory amplifier and a factory uh, subwoofer. So uh, definitely the pluses going on for this car is the sound system and the very tight handling. Um, in the twisties, it is, it's a very fun car. It is front wheel drive. Now, um, let's get in the car. Um, alright, the, uh, the shifter is very tight. Um, it just, it seems a lot tighter than, uh, any other car that, I've ever had it's and it's you almost have to use a little bit of muscle to uh, go through the gears it's not necessarily that short but it's definitely very tight in it and it requires some work speaking of work to uh, to shift this um, I find if you're taller than five foot seven and you have to you know move the seat back much at all um, 
like I am, I find myself like having to reach for fifth gear. And it's just, uh, you know, it's kind of uncomfortable when shifting. It's not just, it's not right here. It's, it's all the way down here. I feel like I've got to reach for third. I feel like I've got to reach for uh, fifth. I have to physically move my body forward. I feel like, I mean, shit, maybe I got short arms. I don't know, but that's, that's one complaint that I got. While I'm still on the shifter, you'll notice that this is metal. Now, uh, I'm in the Midwest. I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, we had a particularly cold um, winter, and it's not over yet, quite yet, but... Um, Every day I came out to drive this car, this metal around here on the shifter, I mean, it was just absolutely frozen, and there's metal under here, too, and, I mean, it was beyond a uncomfortable feeling. I mean, this thing was colder than an ice cube. I mean, um, to come out and drive this thing, even 20, 30 minutes on the road, the thing is still frozen. It's like an ice cube. It literally is. And I haven't drove I haven't drove this car in the summertime, but I can imagine if it gets that cold in the wintertime, I can just imagine how scorching hot that this metal around here uh, would get after sitting in the middle of um, in the in the sun. So um, the shifter it sucks. I'm just going to tell you that. Um, let's see. Moving on. Okay. Right here, uh, you'll see a center console. I'm not going to call it an armrest because the armrest here uh, is really non-existent. You know, um, it's good if you're resting your arm here. But when you're driving, the car is not a comfortable car to drive. Um, it's uh, basically, I've got the armrest here. And I can place my arm there. And, you know, I'm, I'm all about comfort. I'm beyond the, the rice burner stage um and uh so there's a place to put your arm there but if you want to drive with this arm there's just there's no place to put my arm and so that kind of sucks so basically I'd, it's typically there or if you're feeling kind of gangster you know maybe it's for this rest over here you physically move the body over and you ride at that tw 12 o'clock so, which to me is kind of a little bit uncomfortable. Um, and it has an aftermarket uh, Kenwood head unit, a uh, little compartment below the radio. And just base, base, pretty standard. Um, the cup holders, they are in a little bit of an inconvenient position here uh, because I've got a Contigo cup and uh, you know if I'm have a large uh, McDonald's uh, soda pop drink then when I put it in the cup holder I find that the lid uh, the the bezel here um, breaks open the lid every time so um, you know it's you, you just have to watch here because there's not a lot of room Maybe if I can get a better angle, it just comes out a little bit and hinders the placement of, you know, whatever type of cup that you may have in there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, so, overall, this car... Uh, rated pretty low in my book. Um, the car's uh, factory exhaust. Um, I I think it's factory. I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't had this car long, but I would imagine that the exhaust is is factory. Maybe I can. give you an example of what it sounds like. Let me let you listen to the exhaust here. 
and again, I do believe this is factory. do that too much for fear of breaking the engine but so that's it guys um, for me for as long as I've had it it's been a fairly reliable car it has started in negative 10 degree weather um, I don't think I'd want to be married to the car for that long you know, uh, it just doesn't seem like a good platform uh, for a modified or customized ride, which is kind of the inspiration behind you know this car. You know, Mazda gave uh, gave the car this look and sound for you know purpose, and you know I guess if you want to keep the car stock then uh, and still have a little bit of race or rice inspiration yeah, that's one thing but uh give you a little bit of example of acceleration flat to the floor third gear, fourth gear, so that's a little bit of acceleration. Um, one thing I think I forgot to mention about the seats. Um, the seats are relatively comfortable. Um, there's not much bolstering, um, so you know, in the twisties, for you know, as being as uh, having as good a suspension as this car does, and handling as nicely uh, in the turns as it does, uh, I don't feel like it has enough lateral support um, in the seats. So that's another kind of minor complaint that I have. Uh, not too big of a deal, but I also wanted to throw that in before the end of the video. So that's my review of, the two, of my 2003 Mazda Speed. Uh, thanks for tuning in and subscribe for more uh, car reviews.